Let's come back. Number one, sexual freedom from the condemnation for sin. Look at Romans chapter 6, reading from verse 23. In Romans chapter 6, verse 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death. Now, when it talks about death, you might say, But I have sinned before, and I'm still alive. You don't understand. Death actually means separation. The death you are familiar with is physical death. When somebody dies, and then that individual is separated from the land of the living. That's what you understand. That's only one aspect of death. But death is separation. Yes, number one, separation from the life and from the land of the living. Number two, the separation really that is very painful, that is terrible, is the separation from the Lord of life, God, our creator, God, the giver of life. God, whose connection will bring life to you. When you are separated from him, you are separated from the power that creates. You are separated from the joy and the life and the livelihood coming from the creator. And that's why it says, the soul that sinneth, shall, it shall die. That death separation to God that is not there and the claim that we're connected with God that's not there and it says is the wages we receive because of our sin but you know as you look at that verse it doesn't stop there at death it promises life to you and tonight I came to tell you that that separation from God will be cancelled from your life. Yeah. Connection. You'll be connected with life. Eternal life. Everlasting life. Abundant life. A joyful, happy life. An exciting life. Abundant life for you tonight. In Jesus' name. Yeah. That the freedom and you settled already. Settled by Christ. Settled by the one who died for us on the cross of Calvary. That's why it says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. When? By yourself. Voluntarily. With your mind and with your will, you surrender and give yourself to the Lord. And you say, by this commitment, by this confession, and by this faith in Christ, I give myself unreservedly. I give myself only unto Christ. Eternal life will come to you. And tonight is your night. Freedom. Sexual freedom. That freedom is in his salvation. That freedom is in his eternal life. That freedom is in his abundant life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. When you make him the Lord of your life, the master of your life, the director of your life, the controller of your life, and you say, by myself, voluntarily, you see my volition, I take my life out of the hand of Satan, belongs to you, you've given it to Satan a long time, giving it to the occult a long time, giving it to the powers of darkness a long time, but now you say, I'm changing my mind. I'm changing my direction of life. I'm changing my focus. I'm changing masters. I'm changing laws. The devil, Satan, 
or his emissaries or his servants or the gangs representing him will no more be my Lord. I make Christ the Redeemer, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of everyone in the world. I make him my Lord tonight. Immediately from heaven, your name will register. What is it? Amen. It's that you are there. Your name will register in heaven. And God will say, I give you eternal life, everlasting life. I'll give you the chance tonight at the end of the message to use your own personal will and your volition and to say, now I belong to Christ. I turn away from my sin. I turn away from everything that had controlled my life in the past. And now I give my life to Christ. And essential freedom from condemnation will come into your life in Jesus' name. John chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 18. John chapter 3. Verse 18, he that believeth on him is not condemned. The moment you say, I'm not having my confidence in the works of my hand. I'm not having my confidence in the good things I have done. I'm not having my confidence in any religious activity. I've been involved with him and him alone, Christ. I believe on him. I trust in him for my salvation, for my getting to heaven, and for the forgiveness and freedom from condemnation. I depend only on Christ's atonement, on the cross of Calvary. The moment you believe like that, he that believeth is not a community faith, it's a personal faith, a personal decision. You know, there are things that only you can do by yourself. You are born into this world, not in the company of other people. Uh, we're going to be born today, uh -uh, personal. You breathe for yourself. Daddy, can you breathe for me on my behalf? Uh -uh, the air will not get your lungs. If you don't breathe by yourself, personal, you lose the physical life. If you don't believe in Christ, by yourself, you lose the life eternal. You cannot say, I don't know how to eat. Mommy, can you eat for me? It doesn't happen that way. If you're going to have the strength that the food brings by yourself, you'll have that. Have you ever told somebody, I cannot sleep, sleep for me on my behalf? Can't happen that way. If you're going to have rest and restoration of strength in your body, you have to sleep by yourself. What I'm saying is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and to have salvation is not that is a Christian, mommy is a Christian, therefore I am a Christian, I have eternal life. Doesn't work that way. He that believeth on him is not condemned. Tonight, you are going to believe. And as you believe, condemnation will pass away. It says, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Not because God doesn't want to set him free, but because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Condemnation 
will not come to you. Salvation will come to you. Let me hear your amen. amen. And that salvation comes the moment you believe. And you'll do that tonight. And then all guilt, all condemnation will pass away from your heart, from your soul. You'll be a saved soul in Jesus' name. Amen. And look at John chapter 3. We're looking at verse 36. It says in verse 36, John chapter 3, in verse 36, is telling us about the two groups of people in the world. One on the right hand side, the people that believe and they have everlasting life, eternal life. And the other group, by their choice, on the left hand side, you will be on the right hand side. Look at that verse, verse 36. He that believeth on the Son, he that believeth the present day, at this time, at this moment, at the time of opportunity comes, he, singular, that believes on the Son, has everlasting life. Look at the second part. And he that believeth not on the Son shall not see life. I will see life. I will see life. How does that happen? Because the Prince of Life, the Creator of Life, the one that brings life from heaven, it comes to you and it says, Life is a gift. And I want to give you that gift of everlasting life, eternal life now. And as you stretch out your hand of faith, and you say, yes, Lord, I know I cannot have that life except through you. I receive, I accept that life, everlasting, eternal, abundant, the very life of God will come to you in Jesus' name. Look at the others on the other side. It says, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath, the judgment, the punishment of God abideth on him. In John chapter 5, Reading from verse 24, John chapter 5, reading from verse 24, he tells us, he says, Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life. And shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Tonight, the way will be open for you. And the gate to life, the gate to life eternal will be open to you tonight in Jesus' name. When you indicate, yes, Lord, I believe. And I turn away from every sin, every activity, every behavior, every road that leads to death eternal. I turn away from that and I turn to the Lord. Eternal life will be yours tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Salvation, forgiveness, total freedom, sexual freedom from condemnation comes to you tonight, the moment you believe in Jesus' name. Let's look at number two. Number two is the sure freedom from the captivity of sickness. Sickness is like imprisonment. If the person is sick, really sick, he cannot be free and move about the way he wants because that sickness 
That disease ties him down. We say he's bedridden. He's tied to the bed and he cannot come out and do the normal activities. Or sometimes it's a problem of the brain. We say that man is in chains or shackles. And because of the chains and the shackles and the fetters of that brain problem, he cannot be allowed to freely move around in society. It's captivity. Or somebody that is just closed up indoors because he doesn't have the free use of his hands, of his eyes, of his ears, of every part of the body. And so it's like an imprisoned captive. But tonight, whatever sickness is trying to nail you down there, tonight you're free. Sure freedom. A short freedom. A freedom that you will see it in your body tonight. And you will say, what I could not do before, now I can do it. You couldn't talk before, done. Tonight, you'll talk freely. You couldn't hear before, tonight, you'll hear perfectly. And you couldn't move before because your legs, either you have broken bones or you have a paralysis or you have a stroke, whatever, tonight, power will come from heaven. And assuredly, without a shadow of doubt, he'll give you the freedom from captivity of sickness tonight in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 105, verse 37. In Psalm 105, verse 37, it says, He brought them forth. He brought them forth. Remember, I'm talking about those children of Israel. They were there in captivity. They were there in bondage. They were there as slaves, slaves of Pharaoh and slaves of their plagues and slaves of their incarceration and slaves of their pains and the slaves of their infirmity. And then God said, their time for freedom had come. As he tells you tonight, your time of freedom has come. My time of freedom has come. He brought them forth also with silver and gold, poverty can put a person in captivity. Nothing to eat. It's only begging the masters of the slaves. Can I have something there? But tonight, you're free. Supernatural provision will come from heaven. And all that slavery that makes you to be a slave to those who can hand out some little, little things, a little at a time, abundance will come in your life. Because there is sure freedom from the captivity of poverty and the captivity of sickness and the captivity of demonic oppression. All those demons tonight, they have to leave. They have no choice because Christ himself has pronounced you free. And you are free tonight in Jesus' name. It says he brought them forth also with silver and gold. Look at this. And there was not one feeble person. Not one feeble person among their tribes. Can you imagine that? Look at them. About three million people. Young people, teenagers, young adults, unmarried men, unmarried women, 
and married men, parents, all of them, the Red Sea opened for them to cross over. And Pharaoh and his chariots were behind them. And now, as the Red Sea opened for them, they were to cross over. Not one person. Among the three million was on a stretcher. And somebody trying to carry the stretcher. Not one person was blind and trying to find the way through the sea. And not one person was deaf, saying, what did they say? Where are we moving? What direction are we going? All of them, the power of God in their freedom came. Everyone was free. I said everyone was free. Free from their stretchers. You'll be free from your wheelchair. Everything that makes you not to be able to walk like others, Tonight, all those things are broken out of your life. All those things, they are destroyed out of your life tonight in Jesus' name. There was not one feeble person among their tribes. They had 12 tribes. This tribe, look at them, all of them well. And look at the next tribe there. All of them are well. Whichever tribe you are coming from tonight, you are well. Yeah. You are healed. Yeah. Total freedom. And there will be no infirmity. And there will be no sickness following you back home in Jesus' name. Yeah. Not one feeble person. Their lungs were not weak. Their kidneys were not weak, and all the internal parts, the respiratory system, everything made whole. I came to declare to you tonight that that same God, the same, at that time as he is today, that that same Christ, the same, yesterday, today, and forever, is coming your way. And is going to take all the feebleness and all the pain and all the attack, all the affliction away from you tonight in Jesus' name. How did Christ do it? Remember, he is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world and the sickness of the world, the sin and the consequences of the sin. It takes everything away. Look at that in Acts chapter 10. Reading from verse 38, Acts chapter 10, reading from verse 38, it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. I want you to notice something there. God, the one that says, I am God, I change not. And what he did yesterday is doing today. And what he does today is doing tomorrow. That God that changes not, that God, the same God that brought out those children of Israel, out of their captivity and there was not one feeble person among them that same God has sent Jesus to you tonight and he will set you free the moment we mention the name of Jesus healing miracle deliverance dominion will come to you in Jesus name how God the unchangeable, the mutable God anointed Jesus with Jesus, the one the same yesterday and today and forever. The same Jesus that said, go tell John. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk and all the people that have 
any sicknesses, all those sicknesses are taken away. Even the dead are raised. That same Jesus anointed of the Holy Ghost, our power is by your side there tonight. And at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every plague will be taken away. Every infirmity will be taken away. At the mention of the name of Jesus, your healing will come there tonight. It says, who went about doing good and healing all, and healing all. It doesn't matter how long the sickness has been and healing all. It doesn't matter where they have gone and failed to receive healing and healing all. It doesn't matter how incurable the sickness might appear to be and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, oppressed of the devil. There is nothing the devil has done in anyone that Christ cannot reverse. Did you hear that? There is nothing the devil has done in any life that Christ cannot remove or reverse. And tonight, whatever the devil has done by his affliction, infliction, plague, disease, sickness, infirmity in your life, the Lord will remove it tonight. Because he went about, and he's still the same, he's going about doing good and healing all that are oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. How do you get that? How do you receive that in your life? Jeremiah chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 14. In Jeremiah chapter 17, we're looking at verse 14. It says, heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Simple prayer, sure answer. Simple prayer, heal me, O Lord. He didn't even mention the sickness. A simple prayer, heal me, O Lord, sure answer and I shall be healed tonight as we pray that the Lord should touch you, heal you, transform you. Simple prayer, sure answer, you are healed tonight. Look at the second part there, save me and I shall be saved. Look at that. You didn't have to roll on the ground. You didn't have to go to River Jordan to get some water there and bath with that water. You didn't have to burn any candle or incense. Simple prayer and simple request and a sure response from heaven. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For thou art my praise tonight is your night show freedom I say show freedom I say show freedom number three now in number three we're looking at supernatural freedom into the Canaan of sufficiency supernatural something that a man could not give them Something beyond an earthly freedom. A supernatural, heaven sent freedom. Supernatural freedom into the Canaan of sufficiency. You see, whatever we do in life, all the efforts we make, all the trials we make, all the endeavors we get into, by ourselves, we cannot have sufficiency for our spirit, for our soul, for our mind, for time, for eternity, for earth, and for heaven. The only place that sufficiency for your spirit, for your soul, for your mind, for your body, the only place that can come from 
is from the Lord himself. And it is when he grants you by grace, by gift, I'm free. When he gives you that, that is the only time you have that Canaan of sufficiency. Look at Exodus chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 8. Exodus chapter 3, verse 8. It says in verse 8, And I am come down to deliver them. That's the statement of God. He said, Moses, you're just my representative. I'm the one coming down to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Canaanites and, and the Amorites and the Perizzites and, and the Hivites and the Jebusites. He said, I am come down. When he sent Jesus to earth and he was born in Nazareth and lived in Capernaum, and he went about doing good, God came down. His name shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. And when he died on the cross of Calvary for you and for me, it was God that came down with salvation. And he says, and God says now, I am come. If he has come, our salvation is sure. Our sufficiency is sure. Our healing deliverance is sure. It says, I'm come to deliver them. I'm come for one purpose. And the purpose is to deliver them from every form of bondage, every form of captivity. I bring them out and I take them in. The Lord is bringing you out tonight. And he's bringing you in to the Canaan of sufficiency tonight in Jesus' name. And it says he'll bring them in into a land flowing with milk and honey. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 11, and I'm reading there from verse 12. Deuteronomy 11, verse 12, a land which the Lord thy God careth for. That's the land of Canaan, the Canaan of sufficiency, that every need of your life, as it brings you out of darkness, and it brings you to the light, it brings you out of scarcity, and it brings you into sufficiency, and it brings you out of your sickness, and it brings you into healing and health, and it brings you out of your poverty, and it brings you into his prosperity. It says, it's a large, that land of Canaan, which the Lord thy God careth for. The eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it. You come to that land, the land where you have salvation, the land where you have his sufficiency, the land where you have all his provision, the land where you have eternal life, everlasting life. It says, the eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon that land from the beginning of the year even unto the end of the year. Think about that. From the beginning of the year to the end of the year, it brings you to that land of sufficiency and every need in your life will be met and supplied abundantly in Jesus' name. Look at verse 21. What a verse of scripture is this? In verse 21, it says, 
that your days may be multiplied. I didn't hear your amen there. Yeah. And it is of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them. Look at this. That's what you are coming to when you surrender and give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. When you say, I know my life by myself will be a life of insufficiency. A life of incompetence, a life of deficiency, but because I want to cancel that deficiency, that incompetence, and that insufficiency, I now bring myself voluntarily into the hands of Christ, Christ my Savior, Christ my Redeemer. Christ, my sufficiency. Look at the last line there. At the days of heaven upon the earth. The land where the Lord is bringing you to. The experience that the Lord is bringing you to. is a life that gives you total sufficiency. At the days of heaven upon the earth. And that life will begin tonight. Salvation begin tonight. Healing coming tonight. Deliverance beginning tonight. And all the tiredness and the weariness and almost wanting to give up because life by yourself is not worth living. Now you come to Christ tonight. And then uh, the joy of salvation and the joy of his sufficiency and the joy of his healing will come uh, into your life. Today will mark the beginning uh, of a better future in your life in Jesus' name. That's why, that's why, that's why the Bible calls it being born uh, again. It's like you are born now into life and I never got I never saw any joy like this since I was born the first time I never saw any peace like this since I was born the first time a second birth a spiritual birth that you are born anew so that the days of heaven on earth can start in your life Tonight, new life. Tonight, new power. Tonight, new joy coming from heaven into your life tonight in Jesus' name. It's for you. Who is that? Where is that person coming up for your life tonight in Jesus' name? Now, you remember, you have by yourself to surrender this your life unto him and all the things of the past of darkness of the devil of sin of all those dirty dirty things we cannot be mentioning one by one you turn your back on them you say lord you came from heaven for me i now come unto you and i want that new life so that condemnation will vanish away so that all those evil things and the calamity of the past everything will vanish away lord i come and as you come he will accept you i said he will accept you and then he will give you a new life branch new life and you begin the days of heaven on earth in Jesus' name. God is ready. Anyone ready there? I said, anyone ready there? Bow your head and close your eyes. That moment of decision has now come. It's a moment of turning around. It's a moment of closing the door against the past 
and coming into a new life. He'll forgive all your past. He'll set you free. And he'll give you a settled freedom, a sure freedom, and a supernatural freedom. It's bowed and eyes closed. You want to give your life to the Lord and experience that new life now, that forgiveness now, and the cancellation of condemnation in your life now. Here is your chance, wherever you are, just raise up that hand and say, Lord, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. I turn away from darkness and I turn to your light. I turn away from the past and I turn to your present grace, gift of salvation. I turn away from all the bad things of the past and I close the door and I lock the door against them. Lord, I come. Raise up that hand. If you're raising up your hand for that new life, for that forgiveness, for that salvation, for that eternal life, heaven sent life, you're raising up your hand. Please stand up wherever you are. God bless you there. God bless you there. Anyway, you are there. Just you're raising up your hand. I want that eternal life, that everlasting life, that total freedom, freedom from sin, and freedom from the chains of bad habit. You're raising up your hand. Please stand up wherever you are. You want to make him the Lord the director, the controller of your life right now. Rise up wherever you are, online, wherever you are, on the social media, wherever you are, and you want to hand over your life completely unto the Lord. You can indicate also there where you are. Raise up that hand and stand up there. Anywhere you are, you're watching over the television, you're over the radio, the freedom is coming to you, settled, sure, and supernatural. As you are standing up, just tell the Lord there and say, Lord, I come. Out of my sin, I come unto you. Out of my weariness and tiredness, I come unto you. Out of my shameful failure and pride, I come unto you out of deficient effort. I've been trying to change my life by myself. Lord, I come out of the condemnation and the guilt in my heart, in my life. Lord, I come. Tell him, tell him there and say, Lord, I take you now as my Savior. I take you now as my Lord. I take you now as my Redeemer, as the one that comes to set me free. I accept you because you came from heaven for me. And I come to you now in all humility. Believe that he has accepted you and received you. Believe that now his power works in your life and he forgives you and he saves you and he grants you now a brand new life. Amen. Amen. We're going to pray together. I'm praying for you now, here and everywhere you are. You're handing over your life unto the Lord. This prayer is for you. Father, we thank you for your love that sent a Savior from heaven, the Lamb of God, who came to take our sins away. All these who have raised up their hands and they're standing up, and they are turning their backs on the past. 
and they are turning unto you now. Grant them forgiveness and freedom in Jesus' name. Blot their past sins away. Change their lives completely. And I pray that their sins will not come to your remembrance anymore in Jesus' name. Grant them that settled freedom, that sure freedom, that supernatural freedom. Let the peace of God and the joy of salvation be registered in every one of their hearts right now. And the power to go and live a better life, a good life, and a life for Christ here on earth. Grant them that grace and power now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. We know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Amen. Thank you very much. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there and they will interact with you. Answer the questions they are, you know, asking you. It's for us to help you. We ask our overseer to come and lead us at this time. For this time of counseling. I'll be coming back still to pray for you and to take all that yoke, all that infirmity, all that sickness, hand them to the Lord and for you to get your miracle of healing and deliverance tonight. God bless every one of you. Welcome. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Everybody say, welcome to the kingdom of God. Newborn babes in the kingdom of God. If you are watching online, wherever you are, you just gave your life to Christ as you heard the message and the altar call made. The pastor is delighted to be of more help to you. We therefore want to employ you that you look at the link before you there now at the bottom of what you are using. And by the grace of God, you complete the form there. Then for those who are listening through radio and television, and by his grace, you've given your life to Christ, we want you to continue with the convener of GCK, we want to continue with Christ. Therefore, take the phone number, the WhatsApp number, I am dictating to you now. Plus 234 915 I repeat, plus 234. 915-444-9263. There will be a special meeting. Lunch, special lunch, lunch hour with Jesus here tomorrow for all those who are here now at the Alpha location. Tomorrow by 3 p.m., by God's grace, in this same place here, Tomorrow, make sure you are here. You've just given your life to Christ by 3 p.m. tomorrow by his grace. There'll be a special online banquet for all those watching online who gave their lives to Christ. Or who gave their life to Christ. It will take place on Sunday, 6th November 2022. More details about it will be communicated to you. A pastor will be delighted to have you join this special banquet. God bless you. Bori Banquet on Sunday, 6th November 2022 at Deeper Life Campground. 
Bori, 4 p.m. Please, Deeper Life Campground, 4 p.m. On 4 p.m., by his grace, on the 6th of November. 6th of November. So please make sure, by his grace, you are there. If you've just received your miracle, as a pastor will be praying, as prayed, even before this very program, you are there. We still want to hear your testimony. We want to hear from you. God bless you all. Get ready for your miracle. Get ready to catch your miracle. Start telling the problem in your life, bye-bye. You will look for them, you will see them no more. The sicknesses you saw or you are seeing now, in some few minutes' time, you will see them no more. I say you will see them no more. Online, you will see them no more. In Canada, you will see them no more. In United States of America, you see them no more. In Great Britain, you see them no more. All through Europe, you see them no more. All through Africa, you see them no more. All through Australia, you see them no more. Every part of the world, the Lord is going to touch you in some few minutes now. You will see the power of God touching you. The sickness will disappear. You will be set free. You're on the wheelchair, start saying bye-bye to your wheelchair. It's going to be antiquity. It will be taken to museum. It will not be your property any longer. Start saying that now. It's going to happen. Just a few minutes' time, it will happen. It will happen. Whatsoever is the walking stick you will be walking with, your legs is going to receive strength. And... You will throw them away. You will not have them again. Get ready. In some few minutes, you will see the power of God coming right to your life. As a pastor, as the convener of GCK, we come in some few minutes' time, you will see God's wonder, God's signs, God's miracle in your life. In your family, you will see it. Barren women, get ready. You will never be barren again. The Lord is going to touch you. Every part of your life. The money you are saving to go for operation, start thanking God. You use that money to do something good. The Lord is going to take away your problem. Cancel us. Please make sure you take all their particulars, their full name as uh, expected. Make sure you write their telephone number, all the requirements there. Write it without omitting anything. Omitting a figure in their telephone number renders the whole thing useless. So please look at it critically and make sure you complete it very well. If where you are, you have finished counseling, you let us know. The supervisors, you raise up the flag with you there so that we'll be able to know you are finished. Today is my day. What about you? It's your day. You will see it today. We will hear it today. We are not only going to hear, we will see. Hearing and seeing the wonders in your life. Get ready. Just some few minutes time, you start celebrating. You start giving testimony. It shall be so. It will be so. The enemy cannot reverse it. 
The enemy cannot gainsay it. It will be done in your life. It will be done in your life. Tell yourself it will be done in my life. In my family it will be done. Get ready. Get ready. Heaven is ready. The man of God is ready. Today is your day of supernatural freedom. God is going to set you free. Counsel us. Look at areas where there are still people. And please help them to do so. Let's do it quickly. Let's make sure we're accurate. If you are finished, you drop the sleep in the bags with the supervisors. Is to continue helping you. Those who are online, complete the sleep before you there. Today is my day. Today is your day. Get ready. Get ready. It shall come to pass. It will come to pass. Get ready. If you are finished in any of the areas, indicate please. Counselors, remain there. Don't leave where you are there. Remain there. You are going to assist the people. As you will be there, those who are deaf, you are the one who will speak to them. After they have received their miracle, then now you will be able to tell us what has happened. If you are by the blind, you go to that person who is blind, lay your hands upon the eyes, they will see. Those who are lame, give them your hand. Just raise them. The power of God will do the work. It will be done. So remain where you are. Don't go away. Remain there. Remain there. You remember Peter? Peter gave the hand to the lame man. The power of God went through. And that man was raised. Get ready. Get ready. Get set. Today is your day. Today is your day. Globally, get ready. In your house, they get ready. Wherever you are, get ready. The power of God is going to travel faster than lightning and strike you there. And your problem will disappear. Testimonies are bound. How God has done it, the time passed. Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Get ready. The only prayer you should be praying now is just to be saying bye-bye to this problem. God is going to do it again. In your life, in my life, get ready. Counselors, are you ready? Indicate by letting us know. Get ready.
Today is your day, my day, everybody's day. God is going to touch you. God is going to heal you. God has remembered you. Today is the obituary of all your problems. Get ready. Counselors indicate if you are finished. 